years ago. Since then, he's grown and matured as a fighter and won eight straight to put himself in the position to fight the ultra-talented Russian by way of Australia, Kostya Zhu. And working with me, as always, as we get ready for the first of our two main event quality fights this evening, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, a year and a half ago, Kostya Zhu was a rising star with a huge following in the sport, seemed to be on the verge of a potential matchup with Oscar De La Hoya, and then leading on two cards in the 10th round of a fight against Vince Phillips, he caught a big right hand and got knocked out. Can Kostya Zhu come all the way back from that serious setback to where he was before? One minute in this game, Jim, you're a rising star, and the next minute you've been imploded into a black hole. And some fighters never fully recover from that kind of devastating defeat in their rising careers. What Costa Zhu has to, had to do was to somehow recover himself, because one minute he was on the dance card of Oscar De La Hoya for a big payday, and the next minute turned into a year of soul searching. What he finally came up with to get his motor racing again was a kind of necessary alibi. He ran out of gas, he says, because he was anemic and because he had a bad diet, is what it amounted to, bad eating habits, whatever it takes. But tonight he's going to have a Cuban diet, and we'll see if he can um, subsist on that. Man, part of the challenge tonight is that that Cuban diet comes in the form of an entirely different kind of fighter than the guy he had expected to fight, Miguel Angel Gonzalez. One of the breaks of the game in which one of the greatest of all time works with us as expert commentator on Boxing After Dark, world light heavyweight champion Roy Jones, coming off a successful title defense a couple weeks ago. Roy Diabellis Hurtado two weeks ago had a fight, a 10-round decision, and the following day he gets a notification that he can take this bout and does so. Now he says that the fight two weeks ago will not bother him in any way as he prepares for this one. Can we take that at face value? Yes, we can take that at face value. Uh, the Cuban guys are basically amateur to fight their entire career anyway. So they're used to fighting week in and week out if they have to. 10 days is actually a week's rest for him. So I'm sure he's able to adapt to this situation. This is what he did his entire career probably in Cuba. And I don't think it will affect him in a negative way at all tonight. Let's get a closer look at Hurtado now as he gets ready for the biggest chance of his professional boxing career. Let's take a look at uh, some of his highlights of his career. You can see how experienced he was as an amateur, member of Team Freedom, the Cuban fighters who defected to America. And he's restored himself by winning eight straight fights since that loss to Whitaker. Hurtado had hoped to go to the 1992 Olympics as a member of the Cuban team. He was disappointed when coach Alcides Segarra chose another 132-pound fighter. Costa Zhu did get his Olympic experience at Seoul in 1988, fighting for Russia. A closer look now at his professional career. Another fabulous amateur career, former well-away champion, a Russian defector who is now an Australian citizen. And the trademark of Costa Zoo is that braid down the back of his head coming off of an otherwise close-cropped crew cut. He started growing it at Seoul in 1988, and it's still growing 10 years later. Tail of the tape now between Costa Zoo and Diabelli Hurtado, and you will see that Hurtado has large advantages in height and reach, which could be a factor in the bout as he tries to outbox Costa Zoo. Both have gained about 17 pounds since having weighed in yesterday. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Costa Zoo Diabelli Hurtado fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using those unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Now, under California law, the referee or the doctor can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to Fantasy Springs Casino here in Indio, California, where tonight America presents, in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Championship Boxing for Your Entertainment, sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission and the World Boxing Council. WBC supervisor ringside for this bout is Bobby Lee. Along with America Presents, this first bout is brought to you in association with Main Events and Team Freedom. And now, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Interim Super. Bout 
lightweight championship bout. The winner of this bout will be a mandatory opponent for the vacant world championship. The three judges assigned scoring this contest are Hank Ellis Peru, Anik Hantongkam, and Terry Smith. And when the bell rings, working in his 113th, pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, the referee of this bout is Dr. James Jenkin. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, white, and blue, weighing 139 and one quarter pounds. He has a professional record of 28 victories, 19 by knockout with only one defeat. He's a native of Cuba who now fights out of Miami, Florida for Team Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number five in the world. Introducing the Obeles Hurtado. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black and weighing 139 pounds. As a professional, he has a record of 21 victories, 17 by knockout with only one loss and one draw. Originally from Serov, Russia, he now fights out of Sydney, Australia, ranked number two in the world, presenting the former junior welterweight world champion, Hustja Tsu. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Put it in. Gentlemen, obey my commands. Let's go. Let's go. This probably is the first time that uh, two defect defectors, one from Russia and one from Cuba, have fought for a title, fighting on Indian land in the desert of Southern California. What a game. What a country. Just to clarify what Michael Buffer said in the introductions there, the winner of this fight will be deemed an interim 140-pound champion by the governing body whose title is at stake, the WBC. They've mandated that whoever wins must fight Miguel Angel Gonzalez in the spring when Gonzalez recovers from his ribcage injury and is presumably going to be healthy enough to fight. Round one begins with the pattern you might expect, which is Castazu coming forward, trying to drive her title back. Which is basically his best option, Jim, because Hurtado is so much taller than he is. Well, the short, stocky guy has to always chase down the tall, thin, fast guy. Hurtado was not regarded as a power puncher coming into the winner. He hurt. Sue's a power puncher, and there's the first knockdown of the bout. I was just about to say, all of a sudden, he is standing delivering instead of hitting and running. And he got nailed. And he'll never get out of this with Carson Zou, I don't think. Oh, down goes Zou. Two knockdowns in the first minute, six seconds of the bout. Zou got careless and walked right in on a punch. Came in to finish him and walked right into a punch. Give her title a lot of credit because he was seriously hurt when he went down. But this is the fight that Zou wants. Zoo wants to trade punches because he's the stronger of the two fighters. But Hurtado has already caught Zoo square on the left eye, or the right eye, and Zoo's right eye is swelling as he goes down for the second time. And I was about to say Hurtado was not regarded as a puncher before his fight against Whitaker, but he knocked Whitaker down twice and has won six of his last eight by knockdown. By knockout. Remember, there's no three knockdown rule in effect. Pasta Zoo's officially been down twice. He doesn't appear to be hurt, but his right eye is swelling badly already. I've never seen an eye swell as badly as Zoo's eye is swelling so rapidly, unless it was one of Arturo Gatti's eyes. But these are fast knockdowns that are taking Zoo down. Two more power punches land for Hurtado. Zoo lands one of his own and tries to follow up. We expected Hurtado to try to box, but so far, this is a war. Now, I don't understand why Hurtado is fighting this type of a fight. Well, one reason, Roy, is it's an 18-foot ring, which looks even smaller. We thought 
the ring with its small dimensions would create an advantage for Zhu. But it's Hurtado who scored two knockdowns in the first round after Zhu started things off by knocking Hurtado down with his first power punch land. And Hurtado gets belted in the mouth as round one comes to a close. What a tumultuous opening frame. About as good as it gets. Explain to him. He's winning the fight. He can do anything he wants with this guy. But he's got to find his way. He's got to jab. He's got to move. Get him up. Get him up. You, you need to you use your jab. Your jab is what's going to keep your distance. Here you saw in the opening seconds as Hurtado stood in front of Zhu, catching a right hand followed by a left and another right. Came in to finish Hurtado off and almost got finished in return. That looked like more of a slip than a punch, but it was a knockdown by, as counted by the referee. Three knockdowns in the first round. Now, Zhu is definitely the fresher of the two fighters now. But look at his right eye, Roy. Look at the mouse under Zhu's right eye. It's as big around as a quarter. Won't affect as long as he doesn't run into any, any big punches, Jim. All right. But he needs to get this fight over with because it's going to swell worse as the fight goes on. He had Hurtado in trouble at the end of the first round. It looks as though Costa's corner has told him to work to the body a little bit. Tato sneaks in a left hook. Sue comes back with a body punch, followed by a right hand shot over the top. Well, in two rounds in a row, the last one with Phillips and this one, Zoo has been knocked down three times. <laughs> And you wonder whether he can still take a punch, Roy, or whether some, somehow that knockout is still some in his in his mind. Big punches usually are susceptible to big, big, uh, to weak chance. They don't take the punch that they give. Yeah, but it, it, this is not to say that Sue hasn't had a fight since the Phillips fight. That was made. No, no, right. He's seven. had three fights. He's had three fights time. since then, including his brutal beating of Rafael Ruelas four months ago. Well, the problem he has is that he's standing straight up in front of um, Hurtado. That's why Hurtado can hit him with the right hand, because he's not showing any side-to-side -side hit movement. So when he cuts down the pipe, he's coming straight forward, running right into that right hand. Master Zhu fought two Cubans as amateurs. Neither was Hurtado. He lost both of his fights with Cubans and believes that he should have won them both, but that he lost on political scoring. So he saw this, among other things, as a chance for revenge against Cuban fighters. Pace slowing a little bit as round two comes to a close. Now he's tipping the punches a little bit. Sue digging that left hook to the body. And continuing to look for opportunities upstairs. Hurtado still seemingly on wobbly legs, but fighting his way through it and landing counter shots. The reason I said this is the type of fight that Zoo wants is because the Cuban guys went a long time fighting just three rounds. It's more difficult for them to adjust to this long style of a fight than it is for Zoo. Big left hook lands for Hurtado. Has to Zoo backs up for a moment. Well, both of them, Roy, had long amateur careers, and both of them have had more than 20 professional fights. Chances at all, mate. Just be intelligent. You, you gotta throw your hands. You gotta move also. You gotta keep moving. And don't stand in the corner. You gotta keep moving. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at Jed. Smart, 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 smart. Okay? Not to put that in the corner. 
Radio Marti broadcasting back to Cuba tonight. So Cubans who are listening to the Radio Marti network, which is programmed out of the United States to Cuba, can follow the progress of Diabelis Hurtado, a former member of the Cuban national amateur team and a member of the 10-man contingent now called Team Freedom. All of them Cuban defectors fighting as professionals here in the USA. He's one of the three big stars of that team, along with Ramon Garbet and Joel Casamayor. Wild right hand just misses for Hurtado. Castazu. Badly swollen under the right eye, but not yet affecting his vision as he drives forward and looks to land power shots. This is not the same Hurtado who was on a bicycle for most of the time he was fighting Cornell Whitaker. He was trying to become more of a professional fighter. So far, he's done pretty well at it. Two knockdowns to one. I think he feels like his power is good enough to knock uh, Costa Zoo out, so he's taking a chance at going for the knockout tonight. And I don't think that's what Lou Duva wants him to do, but of course, Duva faces the translation problem of trying to tell Hurtado in English through an interpreter what he wants him to do between rounds. the middle for Zoo. Hurtado <laughs> seems to have found his balance now midway through round three and he's taking Zoo's power shots with a little bit more self-assurance. Is Hurtado making a mistake but not trying to exploit the left the right eye of Zoo Roy. Yeah, he's made a mistake because the longer this fight goes, the better it is for Zoo. Good left hook for Hurtado. He's able to counter after Zoo's power shot. Zoo's so confident of his power that he doesn't bring his hands back up after he lands. No, he doesn't. He leaves his head right there in one spot. You would have thought that Zoo might have learned his lesson against Bits Phillips about the importance of defending himself. No, because his whole career he lived on the knockout punches, Jim. Once you make yourself a knockout puncher, you never learn to defend again because you always have so much confidence in that ability to knock people out. Well, that's certainly Costa's mindset. And that's why he's been down here two times already. I think Hurtado is getting weaker, though. Hurtado has looked from the beginning as though he really doesn't have his legs under him. Now, as you pointed out, he was trained for the fight two weeks ago, and he trained right on through. Why would he have any difficulty with conditioning? He shouldn't. Well, I think he caught some really hard punches early in the first round, and that tends to put some lead in your legs. Cost, we're going to pick the defense up. He's right in. He's trying to bring his onto it. And if you get him on the right, smash everything into his body, okay? Cross, he's starting to tire a little bit. Pretty <coughs> good, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even get a shot away on us again, mate, okay? The short, stocky guy comes through with a straight right hand. The tall, thin guy looking to counter. In that same sequence, Zoo is wide open. Round four of a scheduled 12. Harold, how'd you score it through the first three? <laughs> well, Jim, so far I got a one, one, one. 29 to 29. I'll be honest with you, that first round was a tricky round. Even though Hurtado had an extra knockdown, Castazu finished so strong, you had to give him a point for finishing stronger, and therefore I scored it even. But in the second round, I thought Hurtado won it on hand speed. The third round, I thought Castazu pulled it out with the harder right hand. So one, one, and one, all even so far. I had the same score, except I gave Zoo the second round and Hurtado the third round. 
And while you may look at the first three rounds and say, well, this one isn't going to go the distance, so the scores are academic, very often the fights that begin with fireworks end with chess games. <laughs> I don't think this will end in a chess game. It may end in I'm not sure there's a chess player in there. Yeah, it may end in failing fireworks, but not a chess game. Punch it out, punch it out. Now, Kautzu is doing one thing very smart. He's going to the body a little more now, but he left himself very open he threw, after he threw that power combination just now. And had Hurtado land the punches that he threw, he would have knocked him down again, I think. Yeah, Costa just doesn't look as though he's ever going to lose that habit of dropping his hands after he lands a power shot. And that's what I think uh, Hurtado is trying to capitalize on. If you can duck or slip and counter back immediately, you've got a shot. You get surprises in the desert can fry your brains out during the day, and at this time of year, it can freeze your cactus at night. And we're seeing a surprise in how this fight is going. An action fight. Nobody could be sure that's what we would get. Matado just doesn't seem strong on his legs, you know? He always seems to be partially off balance or something. Boy, Costa Zou landed a crushing body shot in that exchange. But he's still so straight up, Jim. He's always easily hitting back. Hurtado just not firing back with nearly the same mustard now. I think the body shots have taken away the snap in Hurtado's punches. I think they have, too. In the first couple of rounds, when Hurtado was able to counter, it was serious. Now he tends to paw with his counter punches. Still to come tonight, 126-pound battle between Kennedy McKinney and Luisito Espinoza. It's McKinney's first fight since last December 19, when he was knocked down in the third round by Junior Jones and then came back to knock Jones out in the fourth. Here, get Okay, let, let's get the towel there. Let, listen, uh, you need to stay away from him. Don't get in too close with him. And watch out for his right hand. He's too powerful. You need to move. You need to move. You need to use those jabs. On the inside. Our interpreter is Ray Torres in the Spanish speaking corner. can't let him get a shot on us. All the good words going to be nullified. Lou Duva threw in the words Muhammad Ali somewhere in there, trying to get her Tato to move more, from, as you see him trying now, but he definitely looks the weaker of the two fighters right now. And I think if he moves much more, he's gonna give Costa too much confidence. But that would be the perfect way to fight a short, power guy like Costa Zoo. Copy box numbers in round four, the first serious differential in punch output is Zoo through 66 punches and a slowing Hurtado through only 49 in the fourth round. If Hurtado begins to fade, Costa Zoo will try to simply pile drive through him. If, if Hurtado had thrown a powerful hook just then, he would knock Costa out because Costa was just standing straight up in front of him. I don't think he has a powerful hook left, although he lands an uppercut there that drives Costa back. That's a powerful hook, Jim. Yep. And more body shots from Zoo. Trying to bring Hurtado's hands down and set up another right-hand shot. Sue is very strong with the left hook to the body and the right up top, straight right hand. Tries to drive it through Hurtado's guard there. Hurtado trying to counter again. Sue should keep going to the body more, though. Yeah, I agree. He's most effective when he sets everything up with that 
powerful left hook to the body. And his opponent is looking very weak now anyway. The body shots will keep him looking weak. Trickle of blood from the nose of Hurtado as Castazu just stalks yeah. and stalks and whacks away. You can see in this round why Zhu was so highly regarded before he lost to Vince Phillips. Oh, good body shot. That's when he hurts you. That's when he hurts you right there. You should keep going to the body. There you go. There you go. And Hurtado goes down as the result of the left hook to the body. And it was a very conscious decision on his part to take a rest. Hey, you okay? All right. This has been a very punishing fifth round for Hurtado at the hands of Castazu. Another knockdown, again on the left hook to the body. And that's it. A brave fight for Hurtado. An outstanding performance by Castazu. The thing is, Larry, what I was saying about the guys, the Cubans not going the distance, most amateur boxers fight amateur looking forward to a professional career. So we train to go more than just the three rounds. The Cubans, however, always train for that three-round period. So they don't learn that as kids to be prepared for a professional fight one day. So you're saying that even as an amateur, you were training for longer distance? Most longer definitely, distance. most definitely. Amateur boxing is just a prelim for us, like uh, the American fighters. We all look to that as just a way of cat catapulting us into an excellent professional career. And you spend the, all your lives knowing that someday you're going to fight more than three rounds. You're going to have to. And the Cubans are thinking of getting to the Olympics. And that's it for them. Great point. Great point, Roy. We've been talking for years about what a great heavyweight Teofilo Stevenson was, but we never know what he would have done in 12-round fights as opposed to three-round fights. Now let's look back at some replays of the closing action as Kostazu closed the show by outlanding Hurtado 39 to 8 down the stretch. Zoo landing 39 of the last 47 landed punches in the bout. Zoo came into the round looking stronger, and those two body punches made him a lot stronger. Another one down goes Hurtado. And there's the second knockdown, and again, you saw the left hook to the body was critical in the exchange. There's that swollen right eye for Costa, but it never was a factor in the fight. No, I knew it wouldn't be a factor because Hurtado was going to weaken, Costa was the power puncher, and... And now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 35 seconds of round number 5. The winner, and now WBC Interim Super Lightweight World Title Holder, Kostya Tsu! Well, I caught a glimpse of the official scorecards, which showed that two of three judges had Kostasu ahead in the bout, despite the fact that you'll recall in round number one, Hurtado was able to knock Tsu down twice after Kostasu had opened the fight by knocking Hurtado down in the very first minute. Final punch stat numbers, and there was a large edge in power punches for Zhu. He outlanded Hurtado by 69 blows anyway, throwing 50 more, landing 69 more, thus the big difference in connect percentage. But the, the greater uh, portion of that differential came in the power punch category as Zhu was simply able to land his hooks his crosses, his uppercuts, pretty much at will, as you can see, landing nearly 50% of them. The left hook to the body, particularly devastating once he stuck to it in the fifth round. Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Kasu. You have another belt. But in that first round, after you belted him, he belted you back. Were you shocked? It's a stupid thing for me. I remember I told in the press conference that I'm rushing always too much. I'm from Russia, I'm rushing too much. And I have to calm down myself, don't rush, because he's a great puncher. 
and a split second I forgot about but it. You, you thought you could end the fight right then and there and you came in wide open. Yeah, probably this way and who knows what's happened in the first round in my mind, but now I've got the belt. This is the more important. Were you surprised that Hurtado stand and fought, stood and fought with you rather than running from you? It doesn't matter if you have to run, you have to stop to punch. And it doesn't matter, I will wait for this opportunity for the whole night. Still, if you can't run and punch same time. And uh, when he stop, he has to punch, have to fight me. And uh, I'm waiting for this opportunity, or like this, he just stood in front of me and he fought. All right, next you're mandated to have to fight Miguel Angel Gonzalez. Yes. And would you then fight, if you win that fight, a rematch with Vince Phillips? We'll see. We'll see. First of all, this one is mentioned defense, of course, against uh, Gonzalez. It's. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'd love to fight Phillips. I'd love to fight Phillips. For him, it's going to be a great opportunity because I've got one belt. He's got another belt, and which belongs to me. And uh, which used to belong to you. Used to belong. Exactly right. But I believe. In a condition like today, I'll uh, gonna be show the great fight. Just one last thing: your eye began to puff up in the very first minute yeah. of the first round. Were you aware of it and aware of the danger of it? It's a scratch, and I'm the I'm the man. I'm the boxer. I don't care about this kind of thing. Oh, look look good right now, and uh, to be world champion without scratch is probably not fair. And I'm very proud to back home with a belt, with a little bit of scratching and. Uh, with so you're British saying German. you're saying that that mouse under your eye is a badge of honor. Oh, it's an enjoyable, an enjoyable part of be world champion. Thank you very much, Kasia. Jim. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Larry. Roy Jones uh, leaving aside for the moment Vince Phillips, who deserves the last word on everything at 140 pounds as a result of his victory over Costa Zoo. Zoo, as Larry mentioned, now faces the possibility of fighting Miguel Angel Gonzalez in the spring. If we get a full strength Miguel Angel Gonzalez, not the one who, who produced a surprisingly subpar effort against Julio Cesar Chavez earlier this year, but the one, for instance, that we saw fighting against Oscar De La Hoya. What would Zoo Gonzalez look like as a fight? It looked like a good matchup, except the fact that Zoo is so strong. Zoo will not be able to, I mean, uh, Gonzalez will not be able to stand there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Costa Zoo. Costa is a very strong fighter. However, uh, Gonzalez does throw a lot of punches with both hands. He's a good power puncher, and if he can protect himself early, he has a chance of beating Zoo. All right. Well, we'll see if that happens in the spring, and then maybe maybe after that, a trip to Australia. <laughs> you ever been down under? <laughs> so it's a fifth-round knockout for Costa Zoo, technical knockout victory over Diobeles Hurtado. Zoo, as you saw, knocking Hurtado down twice in the fifth round before referee James Jenkin stopped the fight and decided that Hurtado had had enough. Still to come tonight, Kennedy McKinney challenging Luincito Espinoza at 126 pounds for the championship held by Espinoza. Spinoza, the Filipino. Right now, let's look ahead to some upcoming sports programs right here on the Network of Champions, HBO. On December 8th, HBO Sports presents the next edition of Sports of the 20th Century, Sugar Ray Robinson, The Bright Lights and Dark Shadows of a Champion, a documentary on the life of the prize fighter cited by many as the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighter in boxing history. Sugar Ray Robinson, The Bright Lights and Dark Shadows of a Champion. Also in December, HBO will bring you two consecutive weeks of World Championship boxing, beginning on the 12th with the anticipated rematch between Ivan Robinson and Arturo Gatti. Plus, Yori Boy Campus defending his junior middleweight crown against rising star Fernando Vargas. And then one week later on the 19th, a super featherweight championship between title holder Floyd Mayweather and Angel Manfredi, along with a heavyweight battle between David Tua and Hasim Rahman. But if you're looking for football, turn to the show The Pros Watch inside the nose and Larry going back almost three years to the uh, the build up to Kennedy McKinney against Marco Antonio Barrera, the tremendous war that launched the whole boxing after dark thing. We wondered then we asked the question, is McKinney too old to be a serious contender for world supremacy? Is that a question we still ask? And we'll keep asking it until he gives us a yes. But that could be three years from now or it could be tonight. But first, let's pause for a moment to recognize the big little giants from America who have entertained us and often thrilled us 
over the last decade. And here they are, Michael Carbajal, as well as McKinney, who came out of the 88 Olympics, Orlando Canizales, the longtime uh, Bantamweight ch uh, champion, uh, Johnny Tapia, still going strong, Kevin Kelly and Junior Jones. It's really been a golden age for these young, little men in America. Right now, what Kenny McKinney is looking for is an annuity. But three times this year, he was getting ready to fight, scheduled to fight Prince Ahmed. Each time the fight was postponed and finally canceled. What he's looking for, Jim, is a victory tonight, Kenny McKinney, hoping that he can get that Brit twit cornered at last. And as we've mentioned many times, of course, every fighter who uh, has world status at 122, 126, or 130 pounds is looking for a fight with Prince Nassim Ahmed. Both of these guys fall into that category. But the net result of what Larry told you, Roy Jones, is that Kennedy hasn't had a fight since December 19 of last year. Now, there's a feeling on the part of experts who've watched both fighters that Espinoza, through his career, is basically a counterpuncher. Kennedy is a natural counterpuncher, though one, of course, with a big right hand. Kennedy told us that he thinks he has to attack Espinoza, has to make the fight in order to give himself a chance to win. You agree? Uh, somewhat, I, I, I agree in a way, because by him attacking, he opens Espinosa up so that he can land his big right hand. But on the other hand, Espinosa is the bigger of the two fighters. Both of them moved up from the bantamweight division, but Espinosa has been a featherweight for some period of time now. So Espinosa probably is the bigger fighter, and I wouldn't really want to see Kennedy run into a big shot from Espinosa. All right. I don't think Kennedy wants to run into a big shot from Espinosa either. He said, the guy is a left hooker. My first uh, job is to block his left hook. So tail of the tape, you can see they're both beyond the age of 30. Espinosa maybe even beyond the age of 31. We're not entirely certain. Half-inch height advantage for McKinney, very similar in reach, weighed in at or within a pound of the 126-pound limit. Tonight, Espinosa weighs 138, and Kennedy McKinney weighs 139 as we put the scales in their dressing rooms. Rules of the bout with Harold Letterman. Once again, the Luisito Espinosa kennedy McKinney fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using those unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round, Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. Kennedy McKinney's career as a musician ended with a little snare drum playing in senior high school, but he has gone on by his own claim to become the greatest boxer in the history of Memphis, Tennessee. He loves Memphis, his hometown, and after a stint of living in Las Vegas, lives back in Memphis now where he's starting a trucking business. Calls this the most important fight of his life. I'm sure he has said that more on more than one occasion in the past, but it's a way of pumping himself up like a true professional because at the end of this rainbow could be Prince Ahmed. 1988 American Olympic team should have had at least four gold medal winners, but Roy Jones, as you know, was robbed. Still, three Americans won gold in Seoul, Kennedy McKinney, Ray Mercer, and Andrew Maynard. A closer look at King Kennedy. There you see the former junior featherweight champion. That's 122 pounds. Been idle for almost a year while waiting for Hamed. And gold medal in Seoul. Luisito Espinosa first carved out prominence in the sport as a bantamweight. Ruled as a bantamweight in the Far East for several years left the Philippines, fought out of Japan for a while, then went back and fought in the Philippines. Now he has moved here to the United States because he says there is no longer any money for boxers in his native land of the Philippines. For him, it's negative money. He still hasn't collected a $130,000 purse for his next to last fight. The government was supposed to put up the money, but we've all heard of the Asian economic crisis. They didn't have $130,000. Closer look at Kennedy, I mean, at Luisito Espinoza. There you see the former Bantamweight champion. Seven defenses of his belt, and he once defended it in front of 300,000 fans in Manila. 
And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions on this one. Ladies and gentlemen from Fantasy Springs Casino here in Indio, California, this is the main event of the evening, brought to you by America Presents, in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Along with Murad Muhammad, Eminem Sports, and main events, this is 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman Ernest so H. Wiener, Vice Chairman Dr. Tirso Del Junco Jr., Executive Officer Rob Lynch, Physicians at Ringside, Dr. Paul Wallace, and Dr. Howard Bear. The timekeeper at the bell is Mike Millsap. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. President, Jose Suleiman, Supervisor at Ringside for the WBC, Frank Quill. The three judges assigned scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Lou Filippo, Bob Logist, and Terry O'Connor. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, working for the 113th time in a world title bout, Hall of Famer Marty Dankin. And now, from Fantasy Springs Casino here in Indio, California, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, trimmed with gold. He weighs 126 pounds. In 1988, he captured Olympic gold and now, as a professional, his record stands at 33 victories, 19 by knockout, with three losses and one draw. He comes to us from Memphis, Tennessee. Here is the challenger, former three-time world champion, Kennedy, the King McKinney. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue and gold. He weighs 125 pounds and brings a professional record of 43 victories, 22 of those by knockout with seven defeats. Tonight, he makes the seventh defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, from Manila in the Philippines, presenting the reigning and defending WBC featherweight champion of the world, Luisito Espinosa. Everybody out but one person. Everybody out but one person. Everyone out but one person. Okay. Turn around. Turn around. Can it? You know your responsibilities. I've told you what mine are. Let's both do our jobs. Luis Espinoza has been stopped three times in his career. Kennedy McKinney knows it. Can he do anything about it? That's why he wants to go forward and land that big right hand. Watch out for headbutts. Espinoza has won two of his last three by technical win. Headbutts have marred at least a half dozen Luisito Espinoza fights. Kennedy McKinney, for his part, would like to keep Espinosa at range where he can work behind his jab and try to set up his big right hand. Espinosa, a relatively slow starter. Although there's a left hook that lands right away. Excuse me, Luisito, I didn't mean to offend you. Very smart, boxer. Let's take a look at his opponent first, see what his opponent has to offer, then he throws his shots. I think McKinney may be trying to set him up, trap him some way into throwing that left hook more often. He took that in a very calm way. It's his best punch, Espinoza. Blocked by McKinney. That time, first one landed. This time, McKinney had the right hand up to block it. Espinoza trying to get low and fire wide shots at the body. 
They try to throw the shots at the body to set up the head shots, like he just did with that left hook. Interesting matchup between a guy who wants to set up his right hand, McKinney, and a guy who wants to set up his left hook, Espinosa. Espinosa's landing the right hand too, though. McKinney with a right hand to the body and a left to the body, and he lands an uppercut. But Espinosa counters and drives Kennedy back, then turns around and pounds him against the ropes as Espinosa has stunned McKinney in the first round. A left hook hurt McKinney bad. Yep. But he's weathering the storm pretty good. And now Kennedy has tasted Espinosa's power, as we say. Yeah, but this is very smart by Espinosa. He saw him throw a barrage of punches at McKinney, and he backed back and gathered himself once he saw that McKinney was back together. So Espinosa showing you his vast experience. He's been a pro for 14 years. First professional fight on his 17th birthday. Down goes McKinney as a right hand followed by a left hook. Landed on the chin. This has been more than a taste. Eight. Come on over here. This has been a buffet. <laughs> McKinney bleeding from the mouth. Espinosa left hook, left hook. Trying to finish McKinney in the final seconds of round one. Now the right hand lands. And a slow starting Kennedy McKinney trying to fight back as round one comes to a close. All of those big punches are results of those big body shots earlier. You know what I'm saying? Give me a towel. Okay. 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 One time, one time. Huh? What's up? You all right? Bro, you got to move to your right, okay? Okay. How you feel? Uh, uh, take, give me some water. 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 Give me some here we can look, take a look at the knockdown. That big right hand is what sent McKinney off balance. A soft tap of the left finished the job that the right had started. Looking for the left, caught the right. We talked about the 343 days off. McKinney looked rusty to you in that first round, Roy? Not necessarily rusty, but the big body shots that Luis Cedar Espinosa was throwing made Kennedy uh, forget about his head. And he set him up for the body shot through a head shot. So big round for Espinosa to start. Landing 36 of 80 punches. 35 of those 36. Power shots. Those numbers come from CompuBox. Another left hook. And McKinney's going to have to get something going here or risk being flooded early by the power shots of Espinosa. And right there, you saw how well Espinosa took Kennedy's right hand. It's because Espinosa's been a featherweight for a long time now. And Kennedy moving up in weight. Oh, and that right hand has frozen McKinney, and this is over. Over. A blistering right cross by Luisito Espinosa. And Kennedy McKinney was a sitting duck along the ropes. He took two or three more shots before Denkin got there to stop it. You remember about six or seven minutes ago, Jim, I said, you may be asking if he's too old three years from now or tonight. And your answer? It was tonight. A sudden, stunning, Second round knockout of Kennedy McKinney by Luisito Espinoza. And Roy, what a textbook job of setting up power shots to the head with hard punches to the body. Yeah, that's what he started out doing. He started out throwing the winging body shots first to make Kennedy let him get close enough to land those big head shots. You know, McKinney has always visualized fights and been very good at thinking about what might happen in a fight with an opponent. And he kept visualizing the left hand of Espinoza, and he was just wide open for the right. It was the right hand that got him, which no is, question. Which is why you never go into a fight looking for one punch to beat you. Always go ready for anything. And McKinney was so cut and dried in his fighter meeting with us yesterday, 
He had a very clear and categorical picture of what he thought was going to happen in the fight. It was very convincing the way he described it to us. But Larry makes exactly the right point because as McKinney tried to protect against the left hook, Espinoza blasted him out of there with right hands. So now the speculation turns to Luisito Espinoza versus Prince Nassim Hamed. Big fight, good fight. You can't imagine that the Prince's people are going to be desperately anxious to go ahead and make the fight off what they saw here, but if they do, give them credit for bravery and mark the date on your calendar. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Marty Denkin waves off the count of 10 following the knockdown and calls a halt to this bout at 47 seconds of round number two. The winner and still WBC featherweight champion of the world, Luisito Espinosa. So Espinoza, having moved here to the United States, now living in San Francisco, in search of bigger and better economic opportunity toward the, toward what would appear to be the end of his boxing career coming up in the near future. But a big performance tonight sets up some possible major paydays in the future for the 126 pounder. Final punch stat numbers from CompuBox. And you can see that Kennedy McKinney never really got started in the fight, landing only nine of 61. Luisito Espinoza blowing him away. 50 of 105 punches landed. The overwhelming majority of them, in fact, almost all of them, power shots. He connected at a 48% rate. And when you do that with right crosses and left hooks, you're going to knock your man out. That's what happened. Now let's go by, or let's go with uh, Larry Merchant and our interpreter, Ramon De Los Santos, as they talk to Espinoza. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Luis, who is now kissing his uh, bride, who is also his business manager and negotiates all of his contracts and did a very good job outside of the ring as you did inside of the ring tonight. and she did a good job. Um, you're coming. Oh, thank you very much uh, for our and uh, also to uh, my medical patient and to say, uh, thank you very much for promoting here. Uh, you've thanked your promoter, you've done your job, but you did a better job for that four minutes during the fight. Did you, did you feel that you were just stronger than him, and is that the reason you came out so aggressively? I, I felt it, and it's right on the first punch. I knew right away I'm going to get this guy. He was looking for your left hook, which has always seemed to have been your best punch. Was he just wide open for those right hands? left hook mo. Hindi dumating yung left hook mo, puro right ang umabot. Kasi yung pag ano ang target ko talaga, right hook talaga. Pero left hook ko pinabangin ko. I see. Okay. He picks with his left hook, but he is actually power punches the right hand. What does he see in the future for himself? Anong nakikita mo sa susunod na mga laban mo? Sa tingin ko, Adam, magiging approval. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's going to improve some more in the next fight. Does he think that he will get a fight with Prince Hamed? Palagin ba makakalabo mo si Prince Hamed? Stay ko pagkailangan pag-aralan. I think I have to study about that. I have to study him pretty good. Thank you very much. Congratulations again, Luis. Uh, uh, thank you very much to America for and Jose and to all the fans uh, here in the States. Thank you to all the America. We'll see you again. Jim? All right, thanks, Larry. Got to teach Luisito to thank HBO when he does that. <laughs> so suppose we can make it. Uh, Prince Nassim Hamed against this guy, Luisito Espinoza. What do you think, Roy? Woo. <laughs> what a fight that would be. Uh, you don't so, have to pay to get in. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm very uh, grateful for that. Uh, I think the problem would be, can the prince deal with somebody who's patient enough to not go for all his antics, for all the things that he do to throw people off? This guy has been around for a little while. This guy is not going to go for that stuff. He's going to be right there waiting to counter when he does catch the prince off guard. So that would be a very interesting fight if the prince is willing to take that chance.
Let's hope it would be quite a war to see. All right, well, we'll have a final word on what... Oh, oh, wait a minute. Larry's standing by with Kennedy McKinney. My fault. Larry? Jim, thank you. Kennedy? Yes. Was he just too big and strong for I you? I think so. I think that was the key. He was, uh, he was, a, he was a lot stronger than I anticipated. He was a lot stronger than I anticipated. You generally visualize fights, and in visualizing this fight, you kept thinking of the left hook and how you were going to bait him into something so that you could land the right hand, but it was his right hand that did the damage. No, not, to be honest with you, it was the left hook that did the damage. He, uh, he had an exceptionally good left hook. I thought I had worked on trying to get away from that left hook, but I was wrong. I don't take anything away from the kid. He's just a tad bit bigger. I mean, this is my first fight at featherweight, and I lost, but you know, I'll be back at 22. I'm just not a featherweight. I'm not a full-blown featherweight. And, uh, I can't take anything away from Lucito. He fought a good fight. He did what he had to do to win. All right, let's take a look at the knockdowns and see what happened here in round one. Describe what you see. That was just a big looping right hand, it seemed, Kennedy. Well, well, in, 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 in my training on, on the tapes, I watched him. He didn't throw a right hand at all. He threw a, a pretty decent left hook. And that was my thing was to try to make sure don't let hit him with the hook. Don't hit me with the hook. But hey, I just got kind of careless, and I didn't. I over, I over est underestimated his power uh, in, the, in the previous fight. And I'm a, feather, I'm a junior featherweight. I'm not a fully blown featherweight. I take nothing away from Lucito. It was a good fight. But he's a featherweight, and I'm a junior featherweight. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You're a senior with us.